in Africa right now. Some countries are wildlife winners and some are wildlife losers. Let's start with a loser, Botswana. This is part of a new film which is showing what's happening in a country that recently banned hunting. No wildlife. The wildlife winners are the countries that promote hunting. South Africa, Namibia and Zimbabwe. All this was laid bare at a conference in the European Parliament last week where I was helping out with the official TV interviews. So I'm about to go in and take part in the conference. I'm British and I'm a hunter. I don't know which they're going to dislike more. MEPs at the conference were surprised to learn that wicked old trophy hunting has been boosting wildlife populations all over the region in the last few decades. We need to put this across because politicians in the EU and the US increasingly interfere with African nature management by imposing or threatening to impose bans on importing hunting trophies. Here's a simple example of how the system works in South Africa. Briefly, the story of Bondobog is that in the 1925, we had exactly about 126 Bondobog left. And they were all in a small national park which was protected against any form of use. And over the years, the country grew that population from that 126 to today at about 8,000 Bondobog that are existing in South Africa. And guess what? Only a thousand actually belongs in that protected area where they were protected the first time. So what did we do there in that case? We simply, when we reached capacity in the national park, we moved some to the private landowners. And what did the landowners do? Take a certain percentage for hunting and therefore bringing back money to conservation and growing the species to where almost 90% of the species now belongs into private hands. They're flourishing in the country and they are no longer need that protected areas where there's no hunting, therefore growing the population over and over. And you're, you're happy with that? We are very happy with that. The conference heard how African countries that embrace conservation hunting, that's the new nice way of saying trophy hunting, as their method of wildlife management, are getting far better results than the countries that do not. I'm sure if you look back at our history, Zimbabweans, locals, some African Zimbabweans, we are hunter-gatherers. Hunting is our culture and wildlife is our heritage. So as your heritage, no one would want to destroy their heritage. So we are here today because Zimbabweans, we are winners because of our sustainable utilization concept. And our, we will not move away from our principle. The conference heard how conservation hunting is keeping back the plague of poaching that's damaging wildlife populations. Now you said in the conference that uh, poaching was one of the real threats. It's, it's, it's come back in Namibia uh, and, and you need help. You need international help to combat it. Yeah. How, is, how is trophy hunting helping Naxo in the fight against poaching and illegal wildlife trafficking? Um, trophy hunting actually contributes for us to be able to employ. We have around 600 game guards. These are our ears uh, on the ground from communities that look after wildlife. At the same time, they work very closely with the with government um, to be able to report cases around you know, wildlife and especially poaching. So did the European Parliament hear this cry? from Africa to stop the hunting bans. Why wasn't half uh, of the Member of Parliament uh, in there represented by those who are against the way we do things? And, and as the uh, Zimbabwe ambassador said, we are the winners. We have wildlife that functions and those who are against us uh, want to destroy that. Why don't they engage with us or visit us in Africa? Engage, but they don't. They don't even appear at the conference here. And that's my life. NGOs don't I... appear, uh, they just don't. <laughs> We have to look where are our animals, where are our people who are in opposite to us. And I don't think it is the parliament. There are some who are fighting very hard, they are fighting very loud, but there are a dozen and more NGOs who come every week in Uvan. I am surprising where they get all the money from. And uh, they make our members nervous and blow them up. And uh, so I think. We have to look around who is running around, who is making dirty 
uh, um, dirty uh, investment in the parliamentarian. Last word to Kari Umbwende, the Namibian ambassador to the EU and a great old stager from African politics over the last 50 years, to remind us why wildlife conservation is so important. I think is that uh, sustainable management of the resources, including uh, trophy hunting, has been good uh, not only to the community in terms of improving their standard of living, uh, not only to the economy in terms of uh, you know revenue for for the state, uh, but also for the wildlife, uh, which is. Um, while we say the wildlife in Namibia is a common heritage of humanity, it would be a pity if we would have a day where there would be no elephants or, or lions. Uh, and therefore, this is a strategy to make sure that these wildlife are conserved uh, for the good of the local community, but also for the good of humanity. Dragging MEPs, congressmen, commissioners and senators from across the Western world back from the brink of mass extinction through good intention is going to be a struggle. This conference, called Keep Calm and Let Africa Take the Lead, is just one step in the right direction.